Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen? Ready for some more mini-games? Well, I'm sure you to say, Piglet, but yes, I am ready for this. Hey, what is up everyone? I'm Sonic the Hedgehog here. Nine Piglets here, we are back for some more of yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for more of Let's Play of Mario Party 10 for the Nintendo Wii U. So last, oh, last weekend is the fact that we did manage to showcase off the final three modes during in bonus games, despite we have a good time in Bowser Challenge, and minigame tournament is okay, I mean, not, nothing amazing, and Bowser Jr. Challenges, that's, well, what a disaster that is. So today for this episode is the fact that we are about to be moving on to uh, the mini games that we have not shown you guys for the majority of the Let's Play of the game. So either way though, let's hit on to free play mode so that way we can able to experience um, tons of mini games to play through. So even then though, uh, yeah, let's get this thing to it. So either way though, doesn't take that long, but we'll explain more about this whenever we get this thing started. So either way, uh, as far as our calculations, as far as I'm aware, that we've sort of not played 12 minigames or something like that, even though it has been a couple of days since we actually played this game though, so even then I just want to classify that. So the first minigame we have not played is Snake Block Party. This minigame is pretty fun though, because, well, it kind of feels like similar to Sky Jinx from Mario Party 9, so keep moving and jump with two, don't fall, so... Yeah, we need to get a lot of usage on those snake blocks, as you can see right there. But this time around, in a three-dimensional space. Yeah, because unlike the ones in New Super Mario Bros. games, that uh, takes place in 2D. But any forms of, uh, you know, specifically in Mario Party 10, that uh, it's all three-dimensional. So even then, I just want to point it out for the sake of time. So either way, though, all we need to do is basically we need to make our way to the finish line first. And, well, that's all you have to do here. Not so much like the forms of Sky Jinx from Mario Party 9, that uh, you do have yourselves your heart uh, system. So even then though, if you're most able to have all three uh, hearts down, this means you'll be able to go down fourth place. So, yeah, I wanted to point it out. So either way though, let's just go ahead and keep on moving. So hopefully we would be able to just catch up and... WHAT?! How can we in second place?! How come we're in second place? We were in the finishing line first. That was bull crap. <laughs> that was bull crap. Although, alternatively speaking, Piglet, in order to get first place, you need to be able to not jump. Ah, uh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> uh, anyway, that was a really, really close call there. Anyway, next mini game is Peeper Panic. So race to the finish, but don't touch the peepers. You know, it's very similar to Snake Blocked Party, except now we need to dodge a lot of peepers, as you can see. Since uh, the ones in the forms of Mario Party Island Tour, that uh, once again you have to avoid these guys, except now you do have a health system. So, it's pretty clear at this point is the fact that some of these mini games can be slightly similar to each other, except with some cosmetic themes and stuff like that, which, yeah. And by the way, if you get caught by these peepers, you have a chance to able to shake the Wii Remote up and down until you're able to actually go back up again, so... Yeah, it can be pretty tricky though, especially noticeable if you really want to go for the achievement in this mini game, is by the fact that you have to, you know, let all four players manage to get to the finishing line uh, without even like, well, just for the sake of time, really. Alright, so let's go ahead and keep on moving, and oh jeez, we won't pay attention to that pattern right here, and I think the finishing line is just literally, oh really? Oh wow, we're doing really bad at this, even though we wasn't paying attention to the actual movement patterns in between those peepers, as you can see. Ah, first fourth place everyone, first fourth place, but either way though, we just want to show you guys of how these mini games plays out, so either way though, let's move on to the next one. And speaking of the next mini game, the next mini game is, um, Balance Ball Bro. Even though this minigame is slightly similar to Football FIFA, but we'll get to that in a second, roll over all of the switches, so we need to activate all these switches before everyone else does. 3, 2, 1, go! 
Even though we always have to do like a some sort of like announcing stuff, because even then know that what's the point about this game to have none minigame announcers, which I feel sorry for, but anyway. Yeah, this minigame is slightly similar to Football FIFA, except well, the noticeable difference is that rather than just, like, uh, kicking the football this time, instead, we need to keep an eyes open with the actual switches they actually, that we need to activate them. So, even then, though, if you manage to activate all the switches, first wins. So, that's how sweet stuff goes, basically. Bob on bogey, we actually going back to the golfing stuff. So, swing fast, don't hit the bob arms. So as what Sonic has mentioned this before, we're going back into the golfing style of mini games since, well, the first time that they are able to use this is on Mario Party 3, and uh, we'll get to that whenever we get onto that uh, particular Let's Play in the future. And they also they did this again in Mario Party 6, and they also done it again in uh, Mario Party Island Tour, and now in Mario Party 10 that we've got ourselves a golfing mini game. So. Yeah, basically what you have to do is just basically you have to get the, uh, a quick faster timing reflexes until you're able to get yourselves the higher amount of points you get, which is specifically 50. But as you can see on screen, that, uh, not only do we have to dodge a lot of bar, uh, bar bombs that you might lose some points if you do so, but if you manage to reach the highest score as possible, which is at minimum 50, uh, 500, this is one of the, uh, the achievements you can able to get by specifically get yourselves 500 points, so yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory, honestly, but sometimes they have to be act out really fast on that reflexings department when it comes to timing and stuff. Spiked Ball Scramble, and basically in this one is just don't get hit or fall off. So it's like enough uh, kind of uh, survival type of minigame, except now we need to dodge a lot of spiked balls, as you can see. So there's not much else we can talk about this, honestly, apart from the fact that today's day is, of course, the 20th of June today, in this case, in 2020. So, for the sake of time, about the fact that, yes, this Let's Play will be finished in June in this weekend. So, even then, though, that way, that, um, I'm sure that Sonic will be able to actually just focusing on Mario Kart Super Circuit after this. So, even then, though, we can able to actually expect to able to do a ton of you know, playthroughs as a result for that specific time. But anyway, enough about that, and looks like Waluigi's now out of the actual thing, and oh boy, this one gets pretty tricky. Ah, oh god, we got cornered! Ah, well, no big deal. We'll let Yoshi win on that one. Yeah, it's a pretty fine uh, minigame as this, but sometimes we always get cornered by Oh yeah, kind of thing about it though, Piglet, is the fact that much like Shy Guy does that specific third position pose, that um, Spike managed to do a little bit of a slip dance or something, which I found was kind of funny. Anyways, next minigame is Fruit Fetch. Jump with two to collect fruit and avoid the urgents. So, in the USA version of this minigame, this minigame is also known as... Uh, Fruits of Doom, or the Fruit of the Doom, which, not to be confused as the, uh, the Fruits of Doom from Mario Party 4, except rather than taking place in a Bowser minigame, instead, it's just a free-for-all minigame, so, yeah, that's something it's worth mentioning, so, I don't think there's anything else, uh, different names in between these, uh, kinds of minigames until for later, because for now on, we just have to collect the, the most insane amount of fruits as we could, so, either way, though, we could able to expect this much, so... Oh, okay, 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 whew, that was close. Even then, though, that, uh, oh, wow, the, all, all three players are almost there to able to get 20 points, which I'm pretty sure is another one of those achievements, I'm assuming so, that, um, you need to able to, um, all four players need to collect about 20 fruits, so, yeah, something's worth to point it out. Alright, Rapid River Race. This minigame is awesome. Keep tapping 2 to boost your speed. Watch out for the urgents. I wish that this will be on the top 100, but nope, that's not the case, sadly. Although, to be fair, Picklers, they already got the, uh, some sort of like these kinds of minigames like these before in Mario Speedwagons. 3, 2, 1, go! You know, it's kind of a shame that this is the only Mario Party game to not feature a new record type of minigame, unless if you count Jaw Drop. So, either way though, that's 
kind of sad, honestly, because even then, I do miss the new record kind of announcers, but hey, at least they'll bring back in Mario Party Star Rush and stuff. Oh boy, we got ourselves a challenge completed. And the achievement on this minigame is the fact that we need to beat this minigame for under 20 seconds or less. So, yeah, and in fact, it was actually a really close call right there. So we definitely call this a new record kind of syndrome because that was actually really cool to achieve from. So even then, uh, yeah, this minigame is seriously, is seriously awesome. Alright, next minigame is Beeline Shrine. So jump with two, don't get hit. So... I think this is another one of the mini games they did show us this, Journey Forms of E3 2014. And I think that uh, that could be also the same applies to the last uh, mini game that we can able to show this off, Journey Forms of Free Play, but we'll get to that in a moment later, because for now, oh yeah, this mini game is feels very similar to All Fried Up in Mario Party 3. Except rather than dodging flames, instead we need to avoid bees. I'm guessing safely to say because of after the events of Mario Party 7 or something, that I was assuming the bees might be able to actually hurt everyone else due to stealing honey back in uh, Mario Party 7 or something. So, again, I may be biased for able to knowing the knowledge, but either way, though, that's all I can say things for this point here. Yeah, that, that mini game is pretty fun though. It always kind of reminds me of like an old school Mario Party mini games, as we all know. But uh, you know, in a safer kind of uh, visual standpoint or something. So, anyway, so let's move on to the next mini game, which is Stampede Status. In this case, well, I apologize for that graphical glitch here and now. I do apologize for that. Uh, pick the biggest group. So either way, we need to pick those three different. Uh, family of Goombas, as you can say, so whoever gets the most. Start. In the American version, this minigame is called uh, Goomba Gallop, which either way though, that makes it a little bit... I don't know how do I think about that, but either way though, something's worth to point out. So, honestly, I'm not too big fan of this minigame either, just because... Well, I swear to God, that about the fact that when I was trying to pay attention to most of those family of Goombas, as far as you can clearly tell. Most of the time, I just keep on getting blindsided by the forms of too much stuff on screen, or perhaps probably just me, and then, yeah, there's only like two rounds, so that's all I have to really think about it. And plus, I think this is kind of like the lamest minigame I've ever encountered with, although the visuals do look nice though, but it's just, I'm just not a big fan of this one, honestly, so... Anyways, I think Goomba might actually help out or something. I get a feeling that we're probably not gonna get it. No, because we just keep on getting distracted by other things, so... Unfortunately, another fourth place for ourselves, but then again, we're only just gonna showcase every single mini games that we have not played yet, during the forms of that time, so even then, no, oh well. Alright, let's move on to the next minigame in terms of free for all minigames that we have not played yet. Sure, we played most of these in that page, but rather, uh, Platform Push, the another minigame that we have not played yet. So, knock off, knock off players off and punch with one and jump kick with two and one. Feels very similar to Magma Mayhem from the likes of Mario Party 9 slash uh, the Top 100 if you want to count that. I just wish that this will be on the Top 100, but then again, the only choice they have is of course Magma Mayhem. Ah, oh, screw you, Spike! Oh well, we'll just go have to watch. Yep, Spike did manage to win on this one. Even though we accept the fact that it does not take place in a lava kind of environment, instead it takes place in, I would say, in the forest. Because, you know, the poison lake that can instantly smash to kill every Mario player and stuff. Alright, Pipe Sniper. This minigame is kind of cool and stuff. Alright, aim quickly and fire with A. So yeah, it feels kind of like the forms of Flinger Painting from Mario Party 9, except rather than dealing with paint, instead, we need to be able to shoot down uh, these piranha plants, as you can see. Even though this minigame almost reminds me of that minigame in uh, Mario Party Star Rush, except, well, the biggest difference is, is that we actually on the Nintendo Wii U, rather than on the 3DS, so even then, uh, we'll point it out whenever we uh, discuss on that front. So, either way though, it looks like we're not doing that great, how to be honest here. But either way though, we'll definitely have to point it out in some form or another. So, 
Anyway, so let's go ahead and... Oh, we got another achievement completed, which I think if I recall, that we need to let all four players manage to reach 30 points at minimum. So, and geez, Waluigi did manage to conquer it all. And we ended up in third place, just like in platform push, but whatever. Let's move on now to the final 3-4 minigame that we have not shown yet. It's Sword to Score. Press A to let go at just the right time. And this minigame does make a return in Mario Party, the top 100. Yeah, which I've no idea why they actually choose that minigame to begin with during, you know, the top 100 version of that. But either way, start. In this minigame you have like two rounds, so yeah. There's also the achievements in this minigame by simply achieving 200 points at minimum. Which I will say that this is by far the most difficult minigame achievement you can able to achieve from. Because most of the time you need to do a lot of precise timing if you really want to let go of the actual swinging rope. But um, it will take us a lot of tries if we're able to do those kinds of stuff. Now, I'm sure uh, most people seem to already know this back in the me first posts that one of them did manage to able to accomplish that achievement and then they somehow posted on me first back in the day in 2015. But since this is now uh, 2020 that the me first is no longer there. Oh sweet, we, we only got 100 points on that second round. See how that's going on now. Alright, so let's see how Spike is doing, and looks like he got 40. I actually really don't mind this minigame. Sometimes most people seem to find this a little bit frustrating to play due to the forms of timing constraints and something like that. Or maybe it's probably because it's like, I don't know, impossible to able to win this sometimes. But when you get the hang of it though, it's actually not too bad honestly. So either way though, oh wow, looks like all three players managed to tie it for second place. Finish! Yeah, you want to point that out, Sonic, because, you know, it just feels kind of lacking without minigame announcer whenever when the minigame is finished. Which, uh, either way, though, that's also another negative thing about this game, you know? Alright, that's all of the 3-4 minigames, and now let's move on to 2 versus 2. If I recall correctly, we have not played, uh, 5 minigames. So let's place, um, Yoshi in our team, because Yoshi was awesome with our team. And let's go and get started with Bob Sledge Battle. So get in sync and get coins. So now I believe in the North American version of this minigame, this minigame is also known as Bob Sledge Battle. So this one makes it a little bit of a shorter title and such. So in this minigame we need to sink in and just collect some coins basically. So and while we're at it, it's the fact that we need to dodge those bombs. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of those moments where, oh jeez, that was close. We're almost gonna get hit by that, uh, the bomb bomb right there. But regardless of such though, Sonic, it's the fact that we did manage to at least dodge that at least. So, anyway, let's dodge another bomb bomb there. And hopefully we should be able to actually grab... Oh jeez, that was actually really close. But I will say that uh, going down the, uh, the sledge like this in a nighttime setting, it does look pretty amazing to look at, especially how... You know, it's all in HD and everything, that uh, it just makes everything else a little bit gorgeously to look at, so... But I digress. So that was cool, especially noticeable in terms of this minigame of us 2. Alright, the next minigame we have not played is Boo Burglars. So, yeah, light up the boos and swing the nets with two to catch the ones with diamonds, so... Basically, one player can able to do the lighting the torch, and the other player can do catch the actual diamonds with the net. So, unfortunately for the sake of time, we're actually going to be doing the most annoying one of the bunch, which we have to utilize the torch with. So honestly, I just kind of prefer the net, honestly, because most of the time, computer players do absolutely... Well, sometimes do absolutely nothing in terms of... Well, just trying to able to do the work for you. So as a result, though, that the computer AI can usually sometimes mess you up at one form or another, which that'll be the only uh, gripe we have with the minigame. But luckily for us, though, that since we still have ourselves Yoshi in our hands, so as a result, that uh, he does manage to do this quite well, actually. So, yeah, how's off for Yoshi for that? Because, you know, especially noticeable how the fact that, well, eventually Piglet will still need to go, uh, go ahead and go back onto 
uh, Yo you know, Yoshi's Crafted World in June at some point on September, so... We haven't got that far left of it though, especially noticeable in terms of the actual length time and such. So, you know, you get the idea for that, so... There goes Waluigi and Spike got surrounded by three boos at peace, so either way does or I really think about it. Alright, I think we've got about three minigames left in terms of two versus two, and the next one is Grand Pound Pals. Alright, so sync up and ground pound, so that's all you have to really do here. This minigame reminds me of Sand Trap from Mario Party 9, Except rather than dealing with uh, Bowser Jr. and such, instead, that we need to grab some coins, basically. How come they got so lucky at the beginning? Oh jeez, there's no way we can catch up. Even then, sometimes I have to admit, though, much like in Sand Trap in Mario Party 9, that um, sometimes our teammates attempt to screw us up most of the time, which even then, uh, that's... You know, that's the case right here, because most of the time, it just doesn't want to sync up with us, so as a result, they just want to let, or he, wants to let the other team win, so... It was there for the sake of the forms of similarities for me, but I don't mind it at all, but it's just that... Sometimes our teammates decide to screw up every now and then, so... Oh well, it's no big deal. Alright, so let's move on to the next mini game. So, yeah, everything else will be expected. Next is Bouncy Bounty. Alright, so let's see here. Jump with two, work as a team to get the coins. So, yet again, we are collecting coins. What is this? New Super Mario Bros. 2 Party Edition? I don't know about you, Piglet, but that's how it goes, basically. So, I don't know about you, but either way, though, that's all I can really think about that for the time. So, basically we once again collecting coins, except now we need to utilize with the note blocks, as you can see. And then, uh, one player can do uh, a lot of platforming and what have you, so even then though, it's an alright minigame, it's just the fact of the matter is though, there's nothing else to say about this apart from, you know, collecting coins! Or in this case, it kind of reminds me of that moment in... You know, in Super Mario Bros. 3, in, uh, during the Pipe Maze, uh, the first uh, tower level, that uh, it does match they're able to require the player, they're able to actually just collect a whole bunch of extra lives due to a lot of coins you can collect. Alright, so the last minigame to showcase off in 2 vs. 2 minigames is Goombrat Combat. Punch with one or two, get the Goombrats onto the other team's side. So yeah, basically in this minigame is the fact that we need to get the cleaner side wins, so, start. Alright, so let's see if how we can able to just shove over those Goombrats to the other side, even though sometimes our teammates doesn't do anything at all, but even then I was just fast worth mentioning. Alright, so let's see here. Finish! Alright, the cleaner side wins, and sure enough, we won by one point! By that one point. Well, good brats, as far as I like to call it that, so... That pretty much concludes the 2 vs 2 minigames out of the way. And now let's go ahead and move on to the, what else, 1 vs 3 minigames. And no, we don't want to play that minigame again, just because we've already shown you guys this. Even though because we got so distracted by any other programs, so... Anyways, now let's move on to 1 vs Rifle minigames now. First up is Hop, Drop, and Roll. So, solo player, just press the A button to attack with bullet bills, and as for rifle teams, well, just use the two to jump out of the way, so... Yeah, that's all you have to think about it. And I do apologize for once again the graphical glitch here and there, for the sake of our, you know, the capture card recording, so I must admit that we need to fix that at some point, whenever we do uh, the final video until tomorrow, so we can able to actually just to classify for doing that, so... I think relatively speaking though, Piglet, is the fact that, well, since after all this is the, uh, well, I would say the second shortest Mario Party Let's Play we've ever done, that the, uh, the other two, which they were Island Tour, and as well as uh, you know, uh, you know, the top 100 and stuff like that, so, anyway, and sadly we just lost that minigame, just because, you know, we weren't gonna able to do some bit of strategy involved, but most of the time we just keep on screwing that up, so, oh well, we only just showing that minigame off in case, so, next minigame is Bullet Bill Bullies, so, 
in this for the sake of time, we're gonna be, well, dodging bullet bills basically. So, solo player avoids the bullet bills and rivals just press 2 to fire. So yeah, in this mini game, that how the fact that in a team of one, that uh, we're going to be able to use this moving platform, send Super Mario 3D Land and Super Mario 3D World. So even then, uh, we might be familiar with that platform. So, but unfortunately, we're going to get ourselves wrecked just because I swear to God, the depth perception is a little bit out of hand and stuff like that sometimes. But either way, though, that's as far as the nitpicking side of things. So. Anyway, so let's go ahead and move on to the next mini game here in terms of, you know, one versus rivals kind of stuff. And the next one is, um, Steal the Beat. Yeah, Steal the Beat is another mini games that we have not played yet. So, solo player, uh, drum with one and two. And rivals is just watch the solo player's rhythm. So, or match the actual, uh, the thing itself. So, this minigame is very similar to both, I would say a combination of both Move to the Music in Mario Party 2 and um, also same applies to uh, The Beats Goes On in Mario Party 3 except the fact that, well, the actual emphasis on this, it plays out very similar to Move to the Music, so... But um, I have to admit though right away is the fact that this minigame does manage to end off really fast, just because most of the time computer players most able to become idiots, especially noticeable in harder or lower difficulties. Most of the time, they just somehow keep on messing things up with the notes and everything, like literally quite fast. So, and also you got these very familiar, um, you know, music remixes, as you can clearly hear. That mo one of them is the Super Mario World uh, remix theme, which is pretty cool and all. So either way. Yeah, that's all I can say about it. So, out of all these three players in that team, that Waluigi, he's the only one never screwed up. So, yeah, that minigame just comes off, ended off really fast. That's the only major gripe we have with that particular minigame, so... But then again, we're just probably pointing, pointing things out right away, but either way, let's move on to the next one, which is... Um... What was it? Oh yeah, Bubble Scrubble. Alright, so, solo player trap everyone in bubbles with two, and rival teams are uh, bounced into trapped friends with two to free them. Alright, so we're able to get this thing to it. But there's one little gripe I have with this mini game, though. I mean, you see why whenever we get onto that specific moment's notice. And that will have to be by the forms of, well, as far as the actual mini game itself, it plays perfectly fine. But what's the only problem with this? Well, it's just whenever when the computer players manage to get cornered from there. Oh, right, they can instantly manage to pop out the actual bubbles while simply able to do that. Oh, jeez, Louise, man. I mean, that could be in instantly broken if they're able to actually noticing this for fact. Especially noticeable how the fact that, well, it's hard to explain about this sometimes because most of the time we won't exactly know of how this minigame plays out to be. I mean, it plays fine enough, but the one worst element of the bunch is definitely when computer players decide to go ahead and free them with the actual bubbles popping. So as a result, yeah, the team of three has a lot of advantages, while the team of one does not. That's probably just me. Alright, next minigame is Cheap Cheap Check. So, I don't think there's any uh, also known as kind of syndrome or something like that. So, solo player, uh, try to distract your rivals with A, and rivals is to count the Cheap Cheaps as in a tally. Alright, let's see how this goes, hey? So we have to scare the cheap cheeps by simply just, well, I would say just keep on tapping onto the actual glass, imagine that. As well as you can able to actually tap the, uh, or click, um, the actual, uh, clamshells, as you can see, it's able to just distract the vision. So, yeah, that's as far as we can say about this minigame, obviously. And when the time is up, then the team of three need to pick the answer, so in this case, they pick 20. Oh, lucky guess. Lucky guess. But it's a cool concept as a minigame as this, but either way, how on earth do they exactly know how many cheap cheaps there are? 
or maybe it's because of computer players I suppose, for in terms of difficulty or something? I was assuming so. Anyways, the final one versus rivals minigames now is Spring Fling. So, solo player, eject your rivals with a ground pound, and rivals wise, they need to avoid getting fling. So yeah, it's kind of like the similar thing, as in uh, Steal the Beat, but except the fact that, well, usually relatively speaking, that we need to utilize those little panels to able to fling them out. So yeah, that's all there is to say about this here. And that was just pretty easy to able to win this, no matter what. Especially noticeable if you get them cornered or even blocked by other um, icons and stuff like that. And then that way you can make the minigame end like nothing else. Alright, that's that done. And now let's move on to the final two minigames that we have not shown yet. And that is the boss battle ones. So first off is PT's bomb battle. So just throw bombs basically. So, And this is one of the final minigames they did show us this. Journey forms within E3 2014, as we've recognized with. Except a noticeable difference is the fact that the lighting itself is a little bit different compared to the ones in back in E3 2014. Actually, to me though, I kind of prefer E3 2014's lighting and everything, just because, I don't know, I just really like the actual color depth, and it's especially noticeable with the actual lighting better. I don't know what it is though, Sonic, but it's most notably because we keep on getting used to with um, the graphical overhauls and stuff like that. Well, this is not too bad, but it's just that we kind of prefer the original E3 2014 a little more, just because of the whole fact that they actually got some very gorgeous coloring and stuff, even though it might be a little bit washed out every now and then, but either way though, let's just go ahead and just keep throwing at bombs at PD Piranha, and that's all you have to really do for the sake of this minigame. And plus, because this particular boss was originated from, you know, the normal boss battle in terms of Mushroom Park, so... Because, yeah, you can definitely see the actual the aesthetics and the environments and everything, that obviously takes place in... Well, Mushroom Park, basically, because you can see Ferris wheels, roller coasters, and all the other jazz. So yeah, that's that. And now let's move on to the final minigame that we have not shown for the sake of the forms of the entire Let's Play, King Boo's Tricky Tiles. Alright, so let's see here. Hop onto the switches to attack with light. So, it's a bit like, um, Fruits Scott's Scurry minigame, except now, rather than collecting fruit, Instead, we need to be able to attack King Boo with the actual light. Because, you know, the actual ghost's weakness is light. Because, you know, it makes an obvious sense. So anyways, we need to aim for the uh, the three points torch light, so we can expect we can able to gather more points in between. And by the way, this particular boss battle was originated from Haunted Trail, uh, you know, the main boss. So, it's kind of a shame that we would like to show this minigame off in draining that board, but um, unfortunately our capture card does have a lot of uh, glitchy up moments here and there sometimes. But either way though, then again, it's open if we get on to tomorrow, which should be the final video of Mario Party 10, then we would be able to actually just to showcase off uh, you know, just trying to able to make our capture card a little bit more stable, so... That's how it goes, basically. However, I have to admit, though, right away, is the fact that, unlike the ones in, uh, King Boo's Puzzle Attack, which is probably, perhaps, is one of our favorite minigames of the entire Mario Party 9, however, I cannot be saying close to this one this time around, because most of the time, that's, um, uh, it's just as kind of feels like it's underwhelming, honestly. Well, despite the fact that you're actually gonna be doing some similar stuff, as you remember from certain minigames, like Fruit Scott's Scurry minigame that we've already played through. And most of the time though, some of these minigames are outright similar to each other. Well, usually relatively speaking of such. But we digress. So yeah, that's all I can say about this for the sake of this point today, folks, because there's not much else to say, apart from the fact that we've now finally managed to able to finally able to get a chance to see some certain minigames that we have not played yet, and all the other stuff like this. In fact, it's been quite a long time since we actually do these kinds of stuff since, well, obviously since Super Mario Party since last year. 
even then though, if one might happen, the journey forms a bit less to say in the Hudson soft Mario Party Let's Plays we're about to be doing, well, it might actually happen. It will be able to happen eventually. So, either way, let's go ahead and just, you know, keep an eyes out for, you know, just try to focus on the 3 plus uh, points mark and uh, just keep on attacking, you know, King Boo himself. And, oh, we're almost there, just almost like. A little bit of health left until we get ourselves the glorious final hit if we get a chance to do that. So, yeah. And also, that's, uh, you know, after when you finish the mini game, you get yourselves uh, three Mario Party points. Unlike, I would say, in Mario Party uh, 9, that I think you get one party point or something like that, even though it has been such a long time since we actually played Mario Party 9, just because we're more used to with Super Mario Party and such. And there goes King Boo. Finish! Even though this will be the final time saying that, just because, well, until tomorrow, it will be the final video. So, you know, you get the idea. So yeah, that's all of the mini games that we'd like to show you for you guys. So even then though, an alright selection, but even then though, that one we always enjoy is Rapid River Race, because that mini game is awesome. So, anyways, we should probably end things off here. So, join us tomorrow for more of Let's Play of Mario Party 10. It's the fact that this will be the finale by showing you guys the Toad's Room and extra things. So, see you guys tomorrow. Later, fellas.